All right, good morning, everybody. Phil here <clears throat> on the stream live for you. Welcome to today's gameplay stream, everyone. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's doing good. It's Thursday. That's right. This week is flying by. This week seriously is flying by for me. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it seems like time is passing pretty quickly here. Um, <clears throat> and so it is the, you know, passing through the end of the month here. Today is actually the 30th of August, 2018. This is the first of two gameplay streams for the day. Another full day of streaming fun for all of you guys, okay? Um, so what's on the agenda? What's going on? Because I actually have I've kind of pulled an audible, although not really. Um, what we're playing today is not originally... Well, it is originally what I had intended, but it's not exactly what I had originally said I was going to do in the game. All right. Um, so what are we doing? Today we are doing more Fire Pro Wrestling World. If you're not aware, this is a new release for this week that came out on Tuesday. I played it for about four hours on Tuesday, mostly just learning the gameplay tutorials and the story mode. And in general, the feedback I received was very mixed. Some people loved it. They were like, wow, it's really cool. It has all the New Japan Pro wrestlers in it. And it's cool to see you create your own wrestler and get out of the training camps and get onto the main card and have your first matches and yada, yada, yada. Other people thought it was boring as hell. They thought that it was just the gameplay was not as action-packed or on par as WWE. The graphics, of course, are not. The graphics are very, uh, you know, 2D pixelated, which they've always have been in Fire Pro. That's kind of the ongoing thing of the series. It's not really about uh, that at all, okay? It's not about the graphics at all. It's about um, the the gameplay in this, and in particular, the created content and the Sims, okay? Now, here's the thing. Since the main feedback that I got on Tuesday was the game's not bad, but the story mode is boring, what we're going to do today, folks, on the fly, together live, is we're going to explore the created content of Fire Pro Wrestling World. We're going to download a lot of that content, okay? And then... We're going to try to create our own simulations. If you're not aware, Fire Pro Wrestling World has many different match types, including some that are not present in WWE games, like barbed wire, death matches, etc. Like some really crazy stuff that's not present in the PG era of WWE, okay? So, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump onto their website, because the way it works is you actually have to go to the Fire Pro website to look at created content. It does not have an in-game browser for it, but you have to do it through a, a web page. And, you know, on the fly, together we'll be searching for many different things. Um, you know, what you, any anything, any zany thing you guys can think of, because you guys might not realize this, but in Fire Pro, you can really much, pretty much get anything you want. Any kind of a character. In fact, the game's only been out for two days. There's already over 5,000 created pieces of content for the game available online. That's how crazy... Fire Pro is, okay? Um, so I'm sure on the fly, I'll be asking people in the stream chat, you know, what do you guys want to see? What should I What should I search for? You know what I mean? And, you know, we'll be searching, downloading a ton of stuff, and then on the fly, setting up sim matches and seeing how they go. Will they be similar to WWE when I do my, my sims every year, or will it be different? You know what I mean? Um, we'll see. We'll have to see how it goes, okay? Um... I guess we'll see, okay? V very interested. I'm very interested to see uh, how this will turn out for us, okay? Will it be fun, entertaining experience where we really explore all the stuff, or will it not be? You know, here's the thing. I've done wrestling video game sims before. You guys know this. This is something that I've done as a tradition at least once a year for the past, like, six, seven years, if I remember correctly. <laughs> it was around 2010, 2011 when I started doing my first sim matches ever, <laughs> So it's been a long-standing tradition. However, it's always been in the annual WWE game. Um, and I've always done it away from the public eye. And what I mean by that is I would always go behind the scenes. I would download a ton of stuff myself, uh, set it up myself. And then the day of, you know, I would stage it almost like a live pay-per-view where I would have segments and, and matches that I would set up and have commercial breaks between them uh, and the like. I'm not doing that. This is going to be on the fly kind of live, all right? Um... So this should be very interesting. I hope that you guys are excited to see how this goes today. Okay, I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm not sure how it's going to go. It could be very entertaining or it could be boring. We'll, we'll find out, all right? This will basically kind of determine how I go about continuing on with Fire Pro Wrestling World. Um, 
if we find a bunch of fun stuff today and we do it and it ends up being entertaining, then maybe what I'll do is set up some special events this year. Maybe I'll do like a Halloween special event and I'll do like a Christmas special event where I do si certain simulated matches. Um, I would definitely like to maybe see uh, real wrestlers for those of us who are wrestling fans, but also I'd like to try fantasy characters, which is typically what I do with my other Sims. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Let's see how it goes today, live together, okay? So four plus hours of this. You know, I figured it's probably going to be an hour or two of setup of downloading and exploring and, and then trying to set stuff up, all right? Um, then probably an hour or two of simming. And then, you know, if we get through all that and we still have extra time, uh, maybe I'll try out the online play of the game because it does have online play, but I don't think, again, I don't really think that's what it's about. The game is more about sims, okay? But it should be interesting to at least explore and see what it's like. All right, then tonight, on my late, late night stream, it will be more Street Fighter V. That's right, folks. More SF5. This time, still exploring Akuma. I really only scratched the surface with Akuma, I feel, uh, the other day when I was trying him out and playing with him. So I will be messing around more with Akuma uh, tonight in Street Fighter V and see how I can do. Another two hours of that. Since you guys have been enjoying my return to Street Fighter V, I see no reason to stop now. Um... And by the way, no, I'm not going to stop playing Street Fighter V. On and off, I will be doing it. I don't know how often I'll be able to do it during this upcoming hardcore gaming season with all the big new releases coming out, but I will do my best to make an honest effort to try to mix in Street Fighter content for you uh, in between all the other stuff. Um, in particular, because Street Fighter V really is like a new game to me now because I haven't played it in two years and I'm just getting back into it. Um, you know, and there's tons of characters I haven't even touched or seen yet. I still I still have yet to see Abigail. I can't believe I still haven't seen this character in action. I haven't seen Manat. Um there's a few quite a few characters I have not seen yet in the game at all yet, right? So interesting. That'll be tonight. Tomorrow, guys, more Dark Souls 3. And at this point in Dark Souls 3, I'm fighting the dancer, which is gonna unlock kind of the end of the story of the main game. Um, although it does open up tons of optional content, and I still have the DLCs to do. So I still got quite a ways to go in Dark Souls 3 before we wrap that playthrough up. So tomorrow, four more hours of that. And then tomorrow night, uh, Friday night, my late night stream will be the conclusion of Shenmue. Two more hours, uh, wrapping this classic game up. I'm so happy I finally got to play it. I've really been enjoying the playthrough. Very different kind of game, honestly, than I was expecting. And it should be great. It should be great. And fun, and I hope that you'll join me tomorrow night for the conclusion of Shenmue. Sunday's my day, or excuse me, Saturday is my day off from streaming. So no streams on Saturday, but I will return on Sunday, probably with more Dark Souls 3. Um, and then next week will be a balance between Dark Souls 3, Street Fighter, Dragon Quest XI that's releasing on Tuesday, okay? And the Battlefield 5 beta is coming out next week. I'll be checking that out. And Spider-Man. So that is a lot of new games and new content coming out in the next week. That's going to be pretty awesome to be checking out finally. Being, being inundated with so many new games, you know what I mean? Like just being surrounded by new games and new gameplay content for the first time in a long time. I mean, we haven't had frequent new releases since, crap, uh, May. May was the last time I think that we actually had some frequent new releases back to back to back. Um, and so finally, finally... We're going to be hitting all this awesome stuff, and I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are excited for it, too, uh, for sure. You know, like, I'm very pumped to be playing all the new releases and, and every day being sharing those gameplay experiences with you guys here on stream. It's going to be pretty sweet. Pretty, pretty sweet, I think. We're going to have a good time together coming up, right? All right, guys, so only two days left in August, and one major way that you guys can help me out is to pledge to my Patreon for August, okay? First of all, you need to pledge either today or tomorrow. It's the only way you can get in for August. If you pledge to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidefill by the end of tomorrow, you will get in on the monthly perks for the month of August. Now, there's many different perk levels. In my opinion, the best perk level is the $5 level. If you pledge 5 bucks or more to my Patreon in the next day, you'll be nominating and voting on indie games for an upcoming indie games event that's going to take place more than likely in, do in October. Um, there have been so many indie games out recently, right, that people have been asking me to play games like Hollow Knight, 
uh, Dead Cells, Death's Gambit, and I haven't had a chance to play any of them because I've been busy with so much other kind of stuff, especially anniversary throwback stuff this summer, that I just have not had a chance whatsoever to touch any of it, all right? So, this event should be great, and you will have control over it if you pledge five bucks or more, all right? In addition, there's other great perks at my Patreon, including getting a private video made, etc. I will not go into full detail, but please give it a look. Patreon.com forward slash DarkSideFill. Please, if you love the streams, you love the content, please consider pledging. It helps me tremendously, all right? Right now, I'm in a time frame where I'm coming up in the next two weeks. Uh, money's going to be incredibly tight to the point where I'm nervous about paying my bills because I didn't make any ad revenue for three weeks on YouTube because of a Google error. Not because I screwed up, not because my content was messed up, because Google had an error and flagged my channel for invalid click activity that didn't exist. And when I finally questioned them and pushed them on it, they said after three weeks, oh, you're right, it didn't exist, we screwed up, and they fixed it. But never, nevertheless, I made no money for three weeks. So it's their fault, but now I have to suffer for it. And I don't know about you guys, but I would like to be able to pay my bills and not have my bank account overdrawn and, you know, going behind on everything because they fucked up. The way you can help is to pledge to my Patreon, because if you pledge to my Patreon, uh, those funds will be coming through in the next couple of days, all right? So please consider it, patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, and thanks to anyone who has pledged, it is much appreciated, all right? <clears throat> now, guys, many things that you can do to help out and support my efforts here on stream. Many ways. Patreon is just one of them, all right? You know most of them. You can check out my Teespring store, right? At my Teespring shop, you can buy cool merchandise uh, that's all Dark Side Phil and DSP related. Being a 10-year-long content creator, my 10th anniversary is actually going to be next month, which is pretty damned awesome. Uh, I do have a 10th anniversary line of product up there, okay? So please give it a look. Anything you buy obviously helps me out, but you guys get a cool collectible as well, all right? That's teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP gaming. If you're here live on the stream and you want to get some interactivity today, um, you could cheer, sub, or tip. If you do any of those things during today's stream, I will give you a verbal shout-out during the stream. But please try to be positive and don't bring in negativity or nonsense. You know, I'm not here for drama. I'm not here to hear about what negative people are doing and nasty people are doing to me or others. Please don't insult myself or others. Don't bring up negative shit about other content creators or streamers. This is not the place for it. I want my streams to be positive and fun. A cool hangout experience where we can all chill and enjoy games together. Uh, not... A place for, you know, little schoolyard antics, all right? Now, in addition, please don't bring up controversial topics like religion or politics. Those never go well on a gameplay stream and just cause problems. So please do not, all right? In general, most people get it. Shoutouts are really awesome. I love the interactivity we have on my daily live streams. I really do. So thank you guys for all of your support. And thanks for everything, you know. I'm looking forward to a lot of interactions with you guys today. Now, in regards to... Um, maybe getting some visual recognition for your contributions. If you guys either cheer 50 bits or more in a single cheer, or if you subscribe to the channel and click the share button after you do, or if you tip me five bucks or more in a single tip, you'll actually get an on-screen thank you animation that will play. So it's cool visual recognition, and then I'll also give you the verbal recognition, all right? In addition, if you look at the top of your screen, you can see we have the stream stats leaderboard in effect. This is something that I will update periodically during today's stream. So if you either subscribe, cheer, or tip, you have a chance to get even more recognition, especially if you're the top cheerer or the top tipper. Your name will be up there, and in fact, I'll start updating that in just a few moments here as I start to do thank you shoutouts on today's stream. Okay? Um, very awesome, right? Very cool. Now, if you subscribe to the channel... You get many benefits, including, obviously, number one, you get access to all of the fun channel emotes. People really love the emotes on this channel. Obviously, my face in many different positions. You've also got the Street Fighter emotes, which are very useful during my now ongoing Street Fighter streams. So, please consider subscribing. In addition, you get the ongoing chat loyalty badge. It'll show how long you've been a subscriber to the channel. And some people are actually coming up on their two-year anniversary Diamond Crowns, which are going to be really sweet, okay? Um... And in addition, if you are a paid subscriber, you do not have to watch advertisements when I run them. Not that that's that big of a deal, because I don't really run that many. But it is cool to know that you don't have to watch them, right? All right. So thanks to anyone who subs. Subbing helps significantly. And I will have new subscriber goals set up for the month of September shortly. Obviously, we have to hit September 1st. But once we do, it's going to be all Halloween-related stuff. I think you guys are really going to dig these goals coming up, all right? All right, um... Last but certainly not least, guys, right now, as I told you, 
I'm coming up, sadly, on a annoying financial position for me where I'm very nervous about my bills. I am. I don't know how, you know, if or how I'm going to get through the next couple of weeks uh, until I get this big balloon payment. I'm actually going to get a really big payment from Twitch because my performance on July on Twitch was great. It was actually one of my best months ever. But I need to get till the middle of September to get paid for that. Normally, I would have a YouTube payment coming in early in the month. And I'm not getting that this month because YouTube didn't give me ads for three weeks. All right. So basically, I'm kind of screwed over financially these next few weeks because of YouTube fucking me over with their error. That being said, I already told you you can help me via Patreon. But if you're here live on stream and you want to contribute live and get recognition immediately, right, for your contribution, the best way that you can help me out right now would be to tip me. All right, and you may say, well, how do, how do I tip? Well, how, how does that work? Well, the way it works is I have a PayPal tips page set up. You can access it via two different methods. If you look below my stream, there's a button that says tip jar. If you click on that button, it should take you right to the page. You can either leave an anonymous tip or you can leave your name in a message. All right, or if you don't see that tip jar button, that's fine. You may be on a different version of the site, like a mobile version. If you type exclamation point tip into the stream chat, it's a command, it'll bring up a link. That link is the PayPal tips page, all right? You can click on it there, and you can tip me via there as well. Either way works. Either way helps me tremendously, because anything you tip me, guys, I get immediately. I can use it immediately to put towards a bill, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting past this bullshit and not having to worry about it, you know? <laughs> The bottom line is it sucks. The situation sucks that this happened, but I really want to get past it. And, um, you know, your help is appreciated. Anything that you guys can lend, you know, and tips are, you know, they've been good the past few weeks. And I'm hoping that I can get, you know, kind of a surge of them in the next week or so to help out with this situation uh, so I can get past it and not have to worry about this. It's really going to suck if everything gets basically backed up and then I get paid from Twitch and now I have to play catch up and screw everything up and it's, it's YouTube's fault it's 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 Google at its core is an automated garbage company that doesn't manually really review anything until they make a mistake so flagging DSP gaming for invalid click activity when there was none because I was with a partner network at the time doesn't make any fucking sense and it takes them three weeks to fix it is a, a joke that's any other company in the world you make a critical mistake and you take three weeks to correct your own internal error, no one would use the company anymore. But sadly, we're all forced to still use YouTube because it is the monopoly on video sharing on the internet. It's the one place where everyone tells me, please, Phil, don't stop uploading your videos here. We still rely on you uploading your videos here as a backup. We need you to keep doing it. So I keep doing it and then I keep relying on it and I keep running into these fucking issues, okay? So please, consider tipping me. Tipping me will help me. Uh you know, uh, significantly in the next two weeks or so. Thank you to anyone who does, and I really do appreciate your help, okay? All right, now, let's get to shout-outs for people who have contributed, all right? Um, first of all, we had a couple people who contributed overnight. We had Infinite55 who did a 100-bit cheer overnight. Thank you, Infinite, for the overnight cheer. I appreciate that. And actually, we had a person who tipped me uh, earlier this morning. His name is Rashawn. He tipped me $5 and asked the following question. He says, will you be playing the new Naruto slash Boruto game? If you didn't know anything about the game, you could create your own player and give different jutsus. I've been seeing stuff on social media about this game. Like, I've been seeing a lot of, of, of tweets and advertisements about it. I guess they actually had, um, they actually had, like, betas of it recently over the summer that they were running. And people were commenting on the game and if they liked it or if they didn't like it. Some people did, some people didn't, I guess. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in the style of, like, the Ultimate Ninja Storm games or not. Um, and plus it has Boruto, so it's obviously later on in the plotline of Naruto where I never read or knew anything about. Um, I'll be honest with you. Is it on my radar? Not really. The last Naruto game that I played was not very good, if you guys remember. It was really, like, lackluster, not very good. Um... That doesn't mean that I'm completely writing this off. If you guys hear stuff about this game being good and are actually want me to ch consider checking it out, I would consider it. I'm always open-minded when it comes to, you know, what I would play on stream. But obviously I would want to get feedback from you guys on if does it sound like something that's worth our time. Or does it just sound like another cash-in style game and it's not going to be great. In this case, you could create your own character and your character has its own custom abilities and moves. That sounds interesting. That's not something that we've seen in a Naruto game that I've played before. But will it have enough content? Will it actually be good enough to hold 
uh, attendance and you, you guys enjoy it, or is this going to be a flash in the pan? I play it twice, you know, play it a little bit online, it's broken, it's not it's stupid, and the story is terrible, and no one cares about it anymore, right? See, I don't know. So, I am waiting on your feedback. Let's see what you guys have to say. If you guys are interested, I'll consider playing it. If not, then I'll skip it. I don't, it's not out yet. I don't know when it comes out, but I know it's not out yet. Um, so give me your feedbacks, everybody, and we'll go from there. Okay. And thank you for Rashawn for that five dollar tip. Uh, you basically have now put the game at least on my radar, and I'm thinking about it. So mission accomplished, right? Okay. All right, now let's move on to people who have cheered, subbed, or tipped during today's stream. Okay. We start off with King of Hypocrisy, who, of course, I'm not surprised it was him to ask this question. He says, any update on the collab with Rings of Redemption? Did he email you yet? The answer is no. He did not email me. And no, there's no update. And honestly, I'm not sweating it. <laughs> it's not a big deal for me. You know, if he does end up messaging me and we talk about it and it ends up something that sounds like it'll be beneficial for both of us, then yeah, I'd consider doing it. If, you know, people come in with feedback and say, don't do it. Right? Then I, mo I won't. And in, in general, it's been 50-50. Some people feel that since Wings is primarily a first-person shooter gamer, that playing with him might actually benefit and have good crossover, and other people think it would be bad. They think that there's people who want me to do stuff with him just so they can basically completely troll both of us at the same time and try to make it a miserable experience. Right? So, yeah. I mean, for me, I understand you know, that there's going to be positives and negatives. And I don't honestly know if I want to do it. I'll be honest with you guys. Yeah, am I going to be checking out the Battlefield 5 beta? Yes. Is it a big deal to me? Not really. It's not a huge deal. It's one day. I'm going to be doing it on Thursday when it comes out. And then after that, Spider-Man comes out the next day. So why the hell? It's not even a big event for me. You know, I'll probably be doing one major stream of it just to check it out and see what it is. Much like I did with Black Ops 4. And that'll be it, you know. Um... It's not going to be some giant, enormous, ginormous hyped event for me or anything like that. Uh, so I guess we'll see. All right. I guess we'll see. All right. Uh, shout out to Hill Hydra, who cheers his Phil to get better AI in Fire Pro Wrestling. You need to up the CPU level to 10. Also, once you've downloaded stuff, you need to start the game back up. The game is now 60 frames per second. Oh, really? Yeah, Fire Pro Wrestling had a big update yesterday. Um... Apparently, they patched it and improved a lot of stuff. Apparently, I guess he's saying the game now runs at 60 frames. Well, I didn't know that. I'm still going to be broadcasting at 30 frames. I mean, it sucks. I didn't know that. I, I'm not going to start the stream over now for the sake of that. Um, <clears throat> but I have not even booted the game yet. So uh, we're, what we're going to do, uh, first, we're going to explore the created content online together at my PC. I'm going to run over to my PC. I'll have the camera there and everything. And we'll go online together for probably an hour or two. You know, it depends because there's over 5,000 created pieces of content for this game so far. I'm sure people will be spotting off, gee, could you find these certain characters, right? Maybe we could do, like, the Power Rangers versus the Ninja Turtles and shit, you know? If people have created really good-looking stuff, I think that this could be really tremendously awesome. It all depends on what people have made, right? Um, then again... Uh, just so you guys know, even though, yes, eventually they probably will make good stuff like that, typically the crazy stuff isn't immediate. Like, more than likely it's going to be more humanoid characters. You're probably not going to find mutants and shit right away. Um, but I'm curious to see what's in the game. I am. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> we're going to do uh, probably about, like I said, you know, jumping on and getting getting uh, content together and then setting up the, the Sims and trying to see how the Sims turn out, right? All live. So... We'll see together how it goes, but the game is not even booted yet, so we're good to go there. No problems, okay? All right, uh, Hill Hydra Shoot again. He says you can also get eight-man matches. It's madness. So that's more than WWE, if you guys aren't aware. In WWE uh, games, the most you can have at, in one time is six, uh, and that's tops at, at all times. Like, even in Royal Rumble matches where typically the ring should be filling up, you can only have six characters at a time in WWE games. Uh, it sounds like Fire Pro Wrestling, you have eight. That's better, right? Especially if you're doing a chaotic match, you want to see chaos and, and action and going on everywhere in the ring, right? Um, that's good. That's a good thing. <clears throat> All right, so Impact King did a 50-bit cheer, and actually, that's the top. Um, that is the top cheer for the day. Let me get you up there so far. Uh, there, Impact King. So Impact King says the following. Um, if you're actually going to take requests for wrestlers, yes, I am actually. I will be taking live requests for re for wrestlers. Don't worry. 
Uh, he says, I like some impact guys like Austin Aries and Eddie Edwards or maybe even Great Muda or Mitsuharu Mizawa. I'm looking forward to this. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the thing is with Fire Pro, <clears throat> it's going to have characters from modern wrestling. I'm sure it's going to have characters from the classic era. It's also going to have fantasy characters. So we can have real wrestlers of the present. We can have wrestlers of the past. We can have, <clears throat> uh, you know zany things. Like, it's going to be pretty wild. We'll see what we can find, okay? Uh, Aussie Steve cheered, and he wants to know if I'm Jewish. <laughs> Just listen to this one. He says, honest question, I don't mean to offend, but are you Jewish? Only asking because you use a Jewish slang, like oy vey and nudnik occasionally. Uh, no, I'm not Jewish. I am not. I just use terms that I've picked up over the years. Maybe I knew a lot of Jewish people. I know I used to listen to Howard Stern. Um, and Howard Stern is Jewish, and he used to use those kind of slang and his, his you know, wording as well. Maybe that's where I picked it up? I don't know. I don't use it all the time, but you're right. Every once in a while, I do. And then Hill Hydra cheered and said, I hope you read my two cheers. I'm trying to help you majorly fill. Okay, yeah, I did, and I think it will help out. So CPU level of 10 uh, when, we do the, when we do the Sims. Downloading the characters off the website and make sure we don't boot the game yet. Um, and what was the other one? Let me see. And the other tip was, uh, blah, 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 blah. oh, an eight-man matches, right? Yeah, eight-man matches should be pretty cool. Very nice. Okay. Um, blackest of Goku's cheered and says, "Who's your favorite black wrestler?" Mine's Junkyard Dog. Well, back in the day, Junkyard Dog was like the big. Him and Coco Beware were the two big African American wrestlers, like who were well known in the eighties. Um. Of all time? See, this is a tough question. There's been many, many, you know, black wrestlers who've been very, very good over the years. I mean, guy, I, you know, Harlem Heat in particular, obviously Booker T, who had an amazing singles career as well. Uh, Shelton Benjamin, who's outstanding. I mean, really good. Um, female wrestler Jacqueline comes to mind. You know, and now in, in the modern era, you got someone like Naomi, who actually has excelled uh, as a wrestler recently. Um... I mean, I'm certainly not just going to sit here and start listing them all, but that's just a few that come to mind for me over the years that I've watched pro wrestling. So there you go. Uh, Kate Cheers says, Happy Taco Thursday and cheers to the long Labor Day weekend. Is it really Labor Day? I didn't even know that. I'm not even kidding you guys. I didn't even know this was Labor Day weekend coming up. I had no idea. Holy shit, really? All right, well, to every, you know, this weekend coming up, happy Labor Day, everyone. I, I was the last person to know. I had no clue. <laughs> I don't follow that stuff. Okay. Wolf Knuckles did a 50-bit cheer and says, If your epic 10-year legacy extends another 5 to 10 years, what are the chances your hometown in Connecticut would build you a statue? Zero. Zero chances, ladies and gentlemen. Kate cheered and says, Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Indeed he does, and indeed we will be seeing um, Spider-Man return. For the first time in many years to my content this coming Friday. Not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. Uh, and I'm excited. As you guys know, well, you may, many of you may know and many of you may not because it's been so long since I played Spider-Man games. But Spider-Man games are some of the games that actually put me on the map as a gamer on YouTube. Spider-Man Web of Shadows, when I played it, it took off tremendously. Okay? Seriously, tremendously. Alright? To the point where... Uh, it was the first playthrough I ever did. At first, it had hundreds of thousands of views. Eventually, it got millions of views, okay? Then, just a couple years later, we had Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, and that was more of the same. People really loved my Spider-Man content on YouTube. Um, then, I have to say, you know, moving forward, uh, there were games like... What was the other one? There was... I think it was Spider-Man... It was the one that had Spider-Man 2099 in it, and that one wasn't very good, in my opinion. And then after that, we had Amazing Spider-Man, which I thought was just okay. Uh, so it's kind of a mix. We had great Spider-Man games that did amazingly well on YouTube, and then there were some kind of not-so-good Spider-Man games, all right? Um, but there was never... Um, there was never... We haven't seen Spider-Man return in a long time, primarily because... Spider-Man kind of has been on the shelf, and then they brought him back a couple years ago. Actually, last year, right? Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, but they didn't do it movie tie-in, which was very surprising. I was expecting a movie tie-in game. They didn't, never made one. Um, but now Spider-Man's finally back, and it's by a company who's very reputable, who's made many great games. From all reports, this game is looking outstandingly good. Um, and I'll be playing on the PS4 Pro, which is fucking sweet. So, 
let's see. You know, I'm excited. I'm very excited for Spider-Man next week. I hope you guys are too. Perhaps we'll even see some people come back who haven't been around in a while to come see me play Spider-Man. I guess we'll find out, right? All right. Very nice. Okay. Real Azuria uh, has subscribed to the channel for the 18th month in a row and says, Sorry, Phil, I'm not able to tip, but however, I will always make use of my free sub on you. Well, thank you for that. Real Azuria, I appreciate that. And listen, listen, this is me being honest with everybody, okay? I understand that there are people out there who are hardcore, longtime fans, and they just can't contribute in any way. That's fine. It, you know, just keep watching, you know, whatever you can do. Spread the word, just be positive in general about the content. You know, it's you guys who have fueled me for 10 straight years to be a content creator. I've been through highs and lows and ups and downs, right? And in general, even though there's been some really rough patches, I have enjoyed this, you know, every step of the way. And, you know, now I'm in a situation where I love what I'm doing. I'm with someone who loves me significantly. We have a great life together here. Um, yes, financially things suck, but outside of that, my job I actually love, right? So... Thank you for all that support. Even if you can't do anything to step up besides just watch the content, just thank you for watching the content and being positive, all right? In particular, Real Azuria, thank you. I appreciate that Twitch Prime sub very much. That's why I give shout-outs for everyone who contributes because I really am appreciative of everything that you guys have done for me and allowed me to do this, what I love, for 10 years going, okay? So thanks for that. And by the way, never feel bad. If you can't contribute at a, at a level that you want me... Oh, man, I wish I could tip Phil, but I can't. Don't ever feel bad about that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> every piece helps. And everything you guys do for me, I do appreciate. And thank you for that, no matter what it is. Okay? All right. Delicious Trouser Snake. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes, this guy's name is Delicious Trouser Snake, if you guys can believe it. All right. <sighs> Just say, in a 100-bit cheer, it seems as though there are people at Google and YouTube who personally have it out for you. Do you consider Google YouTube to be a certified detractor of yours? No, and I don't believe that either. Um, hold on a second. I'm going to get you up on the leaderboard, and I'm not going to put your full name. I'm sorry, but... I'm going to name you Delicious TS. <laughs> well, you are the top cheerer for today, so thank you. Um... <clears throat> No, I don't believe that YouTube or Google has it out for me at all. I really don't. I'll be honest with you guys. I think they just have a company that is terrible. Their company is primarily based on automation. And because of that, they have a lot of things that screwed up. All right. Um, here's the deal. Uh, I mean, here, let me just give you guys some perspective of how, how, how ridiculous this company is. Um, at one point a few weeks ago, my options to get support disappeared from the website i'm not even kidding you like remember how you're supposed to get live chat support or email support if you have a certain number of subscribers on your channel the option disappeared for me i was like huh so i contacted them directly thank god i had their email already from previous communications i said what is going on why did you guys take away my support options and they looked into it and said oh sorry our, our fault was something on our side and they fixed it see so they do this all the time there's shit that they do that they fuck up constantly and they don't even realize it's wrong until someone raises a red flag, then they fix it. And in, my, in particular, yeah, I believe that the whole situation with the invalid click activity on DSP Gaming was bullshit. It was, it was invalid. Here's what happened. As you guys know, I had created a, a dummy AdSense account in early 2017 so that I could partner with Curse because it was a new requirement YouTube had put up at the time. There's no way for you to partner with a company without having AdSense first. Now, I already had a valid AdSense account, but there was also no option to link a valid AdSense account. It literally just said, you must create a new AdSense account. It was a big oversight. It was a, their, their error, right? So I had to do something erroneous because they forced me to in order to partner with Curse. Now, during the year that I was with Curse, YouTube realized the error, and instead of flagging the account and saying, well, this is an invalid AdSense account, uh, you know, just suspend it. Instead, they flagged my whole channel for invalid click activity, which isn't what happened at all. And then it took them three mo weeks to figure out the problem and fix it, even though it was on their side. Like, it's just like, it's a rolling domino effect of fuck-ups. It's literally like a comedy of errors. They just keep fucking up and fucking up and fucking up and not fixing any of it until someone screams loud enough that they finally do. And <clears throat> that's how they are as a company. That's how they've always been. It's not a way to operate. It's not. 
And again, the only reason that they are able to stay in business is because they have monstrous unlimited funds from Google to keep them moving, right? And because there's no other op- there's no other competition. They are 100% a monopoly. Um, but that's what I mean. Do I actively think there's anyone over there who's like, well, that's Dark Side Phil, let's get hit that fucker again. No, if that was the case, are you kidding me? Guys, if that were the case, I would have been gone off of YouTube a long time ago. Like, seriously. I would have been gone a million years ago. A bajillion years ago, I would have been banned from, from YouTube. They could have found anything, any reason, and made it up and said, oh, this is violates our community guidelines, and just, just, you know, deleted my channel. And there's no, I would have no recourse, because in their terms of service, they could do whatever they want, right? Um, so I don't believe that at all. I actually just believe that they are such a bloated company, they, they rely on automation for everything, and their automation sucks. I'm sorry, but their automation just isn't good. It is very erroneous, has lots of problems. And then when people finally call them out, they deny, 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 deny until finally they just fix the problem behind the scenes and don't actually say anything afterward. Um, you know, it's stupid. It is. It's stupid. Um, and I don't know why it happens. I don't know, you know, how they can they continue to, to still be in business besides their monopoly. So there you go. No, I don't believe that YouTube hates me. I really don't. Okay. Uh, Concrete Casket cheered and said, I think the Wings collab is a good idea. I bet you guys will have some funny banter. All right. Touch my stinky. <laughs> Did a 50-bit cheer and says, good day, DSP. How do you feel about the... Oh, my God. Well, that's it. Touch my stinky. I'm sorry. I'm out of here. I'm, not, I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm tapping out of your nonsense. And you are now banned. <laughs> I'm tapping out of the bullshit. I've had enough. And then we have another guy. Oh, we got to ban this guy, too. Yeah, we got... The trolls are in effect here today, guys. And the trolls are now getting banned, so... Oh, my God. Hands Celebratory. <laughs> These names. Hands Celebratory cheered. Oh, my God. To Serial. Or to Zerial, Excuse me. Cheers. I hope today finds you well, DSP. Thank you, to Zerial. Um. Thank you very much uh, for that cheer. And, yeah. I hope, the day, I hope today is a good day. I hope that f the Fire Pro Wrestling stream now, because we're doing Sims... And created content instead of the story mode that people find it more interesting and not boring. Okay, I think it's gonna be really cool to see what's been created and have people throw out ideas and then we'll search for them and see if those ideas are there and if, if we can actually put them into the game or whatever, right? It should be pretty cool. Um, so Prank Black tipped me three dollars and is wondering why he was banned. I have no idea, Prank Black. It wasn't me. So you would have to you would have to talk to the mods. I have no idea what happened. Um, and, you know, we have many mods here today. We got Swaggins, we got Infinite, among a couple others. It could have been anyone. So if anyone knows what happened to this guy and wants to talk to him and sort it out, please do. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know why he was banned. It, it, I was not involved with it, you know. Um, but, you know, he tipped three bucks. Thank you for the tip. However, understand that if you were legitimately moderated, this doesn't mean you're coming back. <laughs> That's not how it works. In fact, I'll be honest with you, Prank Black, probably the best way to go about it would have been to email me, and then after the fact of the stream, I probably would have had mods look into logs or whatever. But Okay. Um. All right, Amos Bro. Amos Bro just cheered. He says, There is a sentiment that you hate indie games, but I don't think that's the case. My question is this. What determines for you what games get played and what don't, and also what determines if a game gets dropped? See, I don't hate indie games. The truth of the matter is, I'm going to be very honest with all of you right now, uh, I have been disappointed over the years that I've done this for a living that people don't like watching indie games and don't like watching RPGs as much as I love playing them. The truth of the matter is that if this weren't a situation where when I stream or when I make content for YouTube that it has to get attention, I would play whatever I want. In fact, I used to do that. If you guys look back to the years of you know 2011 through like 2013... I really didn't give a shit. I just played whatever. I had such viewership on YouTube. It didn't matter what I played. Uh, people would watch it regardless. Now, yeah, there were, if I played an indie game or something like that, it would have way less attention than if I played, say, a big mainstream release. And, uh, yeah, I would take a hit for that. But I was doing so well back then, it didn't matter. I could take the hit and then just go in stride, and it was fine. Now I can't do that anymore. I can't have two, three days. I can't, I can't do... A full indie game that's going to encompass a week where no one's going to show up to my streams and no one's going to contribute and no one's going to watch on YouTube. I just can't do it anymore. You know, this is my job. And, you know, 
It would be like it would be like this. You're an Italian restaurant and you're known for making good Italian food, even though maybe you also would like to make other kinds of food. Okay? You would like to maybe branch out and instead of doing um you know, Italian food, oh, I, all of a sudden I want to start making burgers, okay? Now that's not your forte, right? But maybe it's something that you want to do. So you make burgers, but no one cares. No one comes to your restaurant for three straight days. Now you can't pay your bills, so you got to go back to making Italian food, right? That's kind of what happens with me with my content is I would love to branch out and do more variety. I love RPGs. I love indie games. I love this stuff, but a lot of the times when I go to do it, it doesn't get attention. I'm not going to give you one example. I'm not going to give you two examples. I'm going to give you a ton of examples, all right? A ton of examples of this happening, okay? Um... Only in the Blind Forest, Valiant Hearts, uh, Darkest Dungeon, uh, <laughs> that's just three off the top of my head, Salt and Sanctuary, uh, it seems like every time, every time that I, I decide, oh, let's go outside of what I'm doing and do something, you know, not a, not a major AAA release, not a fighting game, not a From Software game, let's do something different, it's very hard to get attention for it and people a lot of the times will not watch. And it, that really kills me. I've been telling you guys for years. I, I want to go and play RPGs from that I love. A game like Final Fantasy IV. A game like Lost Odyssey. Okay? Uh, the Suikoden series. These are RPGs I've wanted to play on stream and on YouTube for years. And I can't do it because I know that if I just dropped everything to play these games, no one would show up. It sucks. It hate, I hate it. I love these games, and I know that these would be fun experiences sharing these games with you guys. And also, now that I'm a live streamer and I'm interactive, interacting with you guys during the streams while I'm doing it. So even if it's a boring grind, we can still talk and interact and make it entertaining. But still, people won't show up. DJ Trees just said people didn't like Ori. No, DJ Trees, I'm not even kidding you. Ori in the Blind Forest I thought was going to be huge. I played it. Within two hours of me playing it, the people on stream were begging me to stop playing it and do something else because they were so bored. And attendance, I think it started off like seven, 800 viewers, went down to like 200 or less viewers, and everyone complained the game was terrible. Don't play it anymore. <laughs> so I stopped playing it. I know. that's That, for some reason, all right, that's my audience. They love big mainstream AAA releases. They like it when I play fighting games and they like from software. And outside of that, if I do anything outside of the comfort zone, it's like, oh God, this is like not what I'm catered to liking. And I, how dare this be something different from the norm. And I don't want this, you know? Um, and that sucks. I do want to branch out in particular, Amis bro. Indie games recently apparently have been a very hot streak. Games like Hollow Knight, Dead Cells. I've been hearing people talk about these games. Say these are great. They're tremendous. Even on social media, people are talking about these games. But then, I like, well, should I play it? And I'll do a poll. Not even close. You know, I did a poll. Uh, do you want to see me do Dark Souls Three, Grand Theft Auto Three HD, or Dead Cells? And Dead Cells was like, you know, last. You know, it's terrible in the ranking. Like, wow. You know, this is what I mean. Like, this is. You know, I hate to say, it, but I got to do what my audience wants. You know what I mean? I have to. I have to do what my audience wants. Um, and so I kind of have to be in line with that. And, you know, eventually, do I get to this stuff? If I do an Indies Marathon, sure. Then we get to see a showcase of many of these games. And maybe a few of them will end up becoming full playthroughs at a later date that I'll squeeze into my content, right? For example, Night in the Woods, indie game. Played it last year for about 45 minutes to an hour. Liked it, but never went back to it until this year. And now I played the whole game as a, as a balance with all the other stuff I did this summer. And I really enjoyed playing it. Did it get any kind of big attention when I played it? No, but because I was able to balance it with other stuff, it worked. See what I mean? But for me to say, okay, Dead Cells, is, I'm going to play this week. And I do two, three major streams of it and no one shows up. Now I'm dead in the water. I'm screwed myself, right? So there you go. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's not that I hate indie games. It's that I got to do stuff that makes sense business-wise now. You know, yes, I enjoy games, and this is, uh, this is a hobby that I turned into a job, but it's still a job. And a day when I make nothing because I'm doing something that my majority of my viewers don't want to see is a day that I'm shooting myself in the foot, right? <clears throat> okay. Shout out to Third Eye the Third. He says... If I could, I'd donate you. I give you a million dollars. Excuse me. Imagine a stream where you just never have to read donation messages ever again. Just say the name and thanks. That's it. It would be ninety-nine percent just pure gameplay and you reading the chat like normal. 
Hey, listen, the thing is, I don't mind reading the messages. I mean, yeah, every once in a while we get a very big uh, derailing message, and it's annoying. Um, but in general, the, the interactivity is fun. I think the interactivity adds to the streams and makes them better, especially if we're playing a game that maybe has a lot of downtime and isn't exactly the most riveting game. Having that interactivity makes it better, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not saying that I would ever want to have a stream where we don't talk or don't have that interactivity. Uh, but at the same time, I get what you're saying, you know, I'm in a situation where, you know, I have to give a shout out to every person who contributes because that's kind of the thing that's keeping me going. Um, you know, but, you know, the bottom line is it's ridiculous pipe dream. Yeah, someone's going to come and donate a million dollars. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But I am, I am grateful for everything you guys contribute. I really am. Thank you for 10 years and, you know, I'm looking forward to more. Hail Hydra Cheers says, I'm still waiting for a heart transplant. That's right. Hail Hydra actually told us months ago, right, that he was looking for a heart transplant. Well, I, I still wish you luck, Hail Hydra. I hope you're doing well. And thank you for coming by and hanging out at the streams with us, and hopefully you enjoy. AES Charity says, since Xbox has achievements and PlayStation has trophies, why do you think that Nintendo is not including a similar system for the Switch? I don't know. Why does Nintendo, Nintendo even have the fucking Switch? You know, why isn't just a normal console that's as powerful as the other consoles? Uh... So it could actually run games at the same level as other consoles, and therefore it could compete in the console war. The answer is because Nintendo does whatever the fuck they want. They really don't feel that they're in competition with everyone, even though they are. And, uh, you know, they just don't feel that they need it. You know? They don't. So, there you go. That's your answer. Uh, Tootin Common, tip me a dollar. Thank you, Tootin Common, for the dollar tip. I appreciate that. Good to see you on the stream. I will say this, though, Tootin Common. Please don't spam the emotes too much. A few emotes is fine, and you have, in general, I think you've been following the rules, no problem. But just so you know, usually when you show up and you do do those emotes, a lot of people, they follow suit. It's kind of like a follow the leader kind of a deal. And the last thing we want is the entire stream chat full of emotes, spam. So if you could tone it down a bit. But outside of that, thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. All right. T-Dubs cheered and says, hey, Phil, been away for a few days. Uh, oh, my God. He found out he had Lyme disease. That's terrible, man. Really sorry to hear that. I hope that you get better, um, because I, you know, I know that Lyme disease can be a pretty debilitating disease in advanced stages. So I hope you caught it early, and I hope you're doing all right. Um, he says, "I missed the first Fire Pro stream. Did you enjoy?" Well, it was kind of a mixed bag. Fire Pro Wrestling, first of all, as I said earlier, the graphics are nowhere near anywhere like a modern game. It's not. This game is not striving to be WWE in any way, shape, or form. And I think we kind of get that impression, right? The gameplay is very simplified as well. Um, and I'll be honest, like, I played the tutorial. At first, I didn't get it. Then I got it, and I kind of started liking it. And the story mode, if you're a fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling, the story mode is great because it features all of those wrestlers. If you're not, you probably have no idea who these guys are and don't care, and therefore it's not a big deal, and it could be pretty much a repetitive grind. So the first stream was a mixed bag. It was cool to be introduced to the, the Fire Pro Wrestling universe for the first time and to see kind of how the gameplay varied and all that kind of stuff. But by the end of the stream, a lot of people were bored because it seemed like the story mode ain't so great. So that's why we are focusing on the created content today. Okay, guys? All right. Um, AES, cheer. And he says, I remember when you did an overview video of your gaming calendar for the month. I think a good idea would be to have an IRL stream where you go over the calendar and ask your viewers' opinions for each game. It determines which you should play and which you should skip. Um... Well, first of all, to do an IRL stream, I would have to use my phone. In which case, the phone probably would not be great because on the fly holding a phone trying to film a calendar probably is going to end up being blurry. Like, like the, when I do those calendar videos, I use my camcorder, right? It's a handheld camera where I can adjust the, 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 the zoom and everything, the focus. You can't do that with a phone. Um, I mean, I could do an IRL stream where I kind of go through that, but I don't know. Like, for me, there's so many games out there. And quite frankly, if I were to go through every release, most people would probably say, oh, I want that, I like that, I like that. For me, it's like, I just go through myself. Um, I go through myself and kind of determine what I'm at least interest, semi-interested in. And then I share that with you guys when I go over the, the, the schedules and the like. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't think, an, I, 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 I appreciate the input. I don't know necessarily if that would work. Just being honest here, I don't know if it would work. Um... So there you go. Uh, Wolf Knuckles cheered and wants to know about how many people have ever been banned in the stream. There's no way for me to tell that. That's a silly question. 
to people who are being banned are trolls, and they're being banned for good reason. Uh, Lolly Isaac Newton. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> uh, anyway, he says, Hey, Phil, would you ever consider going back to Kingdom Hearts 2 and doing a critical mode all bosses run? No, I would not. Absolutely not. All right, shout out to AES, who cheered and said, My PS Vita just arrived. What's funny is that the inclusion of a trophy system encourages me to play it more than Switch, even though Octopath Traveler is still in the back lot. Well, just the Vita in general is a more modernized thing than the Switch. I hate to say it. It really is. Like, the Vita, when you play the Vita, it feels like you're playing a PS3. That's kind of when I, my impression when I first got my Vita and I was playing various games on it. Um... It felt like I was playing a handheld PS3. It had the same system for messaging. It had the same trophies that popped up. You know what I mean? The same PlayStation Store. All It really did feel like the, that, that feeling. You felt like you were playing a modern console in your hands. The Switch feels like its own gimmick because Nintendo made it that way. We're going to make a console that doesn't operate like another console. It feels different. The controllers are different, right? They do it on purpose. Um, so, you know, I hear you. And I, I'm not necessarily saying that there's people who play games just to get achievements or trophies. I know there are. And I'm certainly not saying that really affects Nintendo negatively. I don't think it does. But I do think that there are a group of people out there who are intrigued by Nintendo, but they purposely stay away because Nintendo does things so oddly different from other gaming companies. And I think that if Nintendo were more similar to what other gaming companies did, that maybe they would have more widespread success than they do. Even though, not to say that they don't have it, because they do. They have a hardcore installed fan base that buy everything they do. But they would actually probably have more success if they would just loosen up a little and stop saying, we gotta be so different from everybody else. We gotta have a drastically different, uh, you know, console. We gotta have drastically different games. We gotta have everything with a gimmick and a weird thing. We don't need achievements or trophies. We do things differently. If they would just kind of realize that not that being different isn't always a good thing that maybe there are common practices of gaming and gameplay in general over the past 10 15 years common practices that have become mainstream because they're good things that people like that they shouldn't ignore them right i think it would be cool if nintendo games had uh special achievements imagine if in super mario odyssey <clears throat> there were special achievements for completing certain optional objectives right and you get it, you get, maybe you get even get something for it. Oh, you completed an optional objective in Super Mario Odyssey, you know, you, you achievement, you unlock this special suit for Mario. And I know that that does exist in the game, but you know what, it's not like a, a tracking system like trophies or achievements. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> I definitely think that would work. I do. But they don't do that. They say, no, you know, no, we, you know, we're not going to do, you know, we're just going to do our own thing. So, hey, that's Nintendo, man. That's Nintendo. So, they do what they want to do. <laughs> uh, Hill Hydra cheered again. He says, you can also put match speed to 800 to change it. It's in the match options, and thank you. Well, do I want to do that? I don't see. I don't know what match speed is or does in the game yet. I haven't messed it. I don't, I don't want the guys moving into, like, like fucking, you know, Speedy Gonzalez flying around the ring. You know, it's so fast we can't track it. <laughs> I guess we're going to have to experiment with some stuff today, definitely. We're going to do some experimenting with the settings and uh and see how it goes all right <clears throat> so uh Tootin common has now tipped me 50 dollars. thank you very much Tootin common i appreciate that let's get you up on the leaderboard i spelled that wrong totally and you know uh, you know being very transparent with everyone here a lot of people have been asking about Tootin common recently they've been saying well what's up with him He's been tipping a lot lately. This was the same guy who did all those cheers last week. Uh, so far, you know, so good. You know, he's being very supportive, and so I'm giving him credit where credit is due. I see no indication that the guy is being dishonest or whatever, and, you know, it's helping out tremendously right now. As you guys know, I told you the best way to support me right now is to tip me because of what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks with not getting the YouTube money I usually get because they fucked me over. So this is going to help me big time, and I want to say thank you to Tootin Common for that support. Uh, it is much appreciated, <clears throat> and it will help coming up, so thank you for that very much. Um, all right. Concrete Casket cheered. He says that Derek says, 
Uh, I hope you can find a whole lot of Power Ranger creations in Fire Pro Wrestling, like Tommy Oliver and others. Zordon, maybe? Rita Repulsa, maybe even Alpha 5. So here's the thing. We're going to search, but from what I'm going to understand, all right, and I don't know, because, again, this is the first Fire Pro Wrestling game I've ever played, that you can get a lot of humanoid characters, but they don't have a lot of, like, wild shit. And what I mean by that is you're not going to get, like, like you just said, uh, Alpha 5, right? Who is the, the robot from, from Power Rangers. His head is shaped like a flying saucer. We're probably not going to find that because why would there be a flying saucer head in a wrestling simmer? You see what I mean? Like, it probably won't exist. But if you're talking like more humanoid, like if you want, oh, uh, Donald Trump is in the game. He probably is. There's probably 400 of him. You see what I mean? I'm sure for a fact there's going to be lots of wrestlers, real wrestlers will find. And I'm sure there will be a lot of fantasy characters, but they may have to be more... Uh, more realistic looking, more more looking like normal humans. I don't know, though. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. Um, And we'll go in there and we'll find insane zany stuff. We're going to find out today firsthand. I don't know. We're going to find out together, okay? That's what I mean. Like, this stream is going to be very unique in that, in that way that we're going to be exploring this game together, the content, downloading a ton of it, and, you know, seeing where it goes, so. Okay. Um... So, I think that's it. I think we covered everything. Oh, hold on. Amos Bros says, something you should know in order to find the creator wrestlers, you have to sign into the PlayStation Network. Oh, I already know. I already, I've already got it ready, Amos Bro. It was actually someone on Twitter last night hooked me up. They gave me the link. They, I got it all set up ahead of time. We're ready to go. In fact, I'll show you guys. Hold on. See? We're ready to go, but I have to move my camera because right now I'm on the love seat. I'm not at the PC. The PC's over there. So, what I have to do is move from here to the PC, move the camera, move the microphone, and we're going to go through this together, look at all this creative content, and pick the things we want, and I'm going to ask you guys, let's search, tell me, what do you want to search for, and we'll search, and we're gonna just going to go from there, all right? I'm already good to go. I'm set up and ready to, to, to do this, so it's going to be a fun experience, okay? Should be pretty good. All right. Um, naked girls, though, there's no naked girls. <laughs> naked girls. I'm pretty sure they're not going to have naked girls. That uh, I'm pretty sure that people get in trouble for that. All right. So, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, everything. Thanks for all the support. Uh, let's take a look. Did we, did we uh, get any change in subs before we start here? Nope. In fact, we went down in subs. That sucks. Well, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. That's that's the nature of the beast. When you're a live streamer, you get ups and downs when it comes to the subs, all right? I'm, I'm fully... By the way, just so you guys know, I fully expect in the next couple of days, um, in the next couple of days, we are going to see uh, a big dip in subs. And what I mean by that is it was near the end of July that that Anonymous gifted a ridiculous amount of subs i think it was like 30 to 40 subs in a single day because he wanted to see me play night in the woods and i told him that we would do it as a sub goal and he ended up gifting so many subs and those are going to all expire those are all gifted subs uh that are going to go away okay so just saying uh, excuse me just saying i know for a fact we're going to see a big dip in subscription soon that's okay I'm actually kind of hoping it does happen in the next couple of days because that will help me to set up the sub goals for September realistically because here's what I don't want to happen, okay? Let's say the end of September, or excuse me, the end of August, we're at like 530 subs, okay? So I set up my sub goals. Tier 1 is 550, tier 2 is 575, and tier 3 600 subs. But then, boom, all those gifted subs expire, and now we go from 530 down to 500 or maybe 475. Now, going from 475 to 575 is a daunting task. See what I mean? So, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that if, if they're going to dip, they'll dip soon. And that way, I can set up the sub goals for September realistically so we're not setting, up, setting ourselves up to fail. You see what I mean? Okay. Um, Hill Hydra just cheered again. He says, you can edit the search in the filter. Yes, I am aware of that. Um, I agree. And... I, not I agree. I, uh, I, I'm I aware of that. I saw it. I saw it on the page, and we're going to mess with that today. So, All right, and Third Eye the Third cheered. He says, a streamer carries the stream. It's not the game that's important. So I don't get why there are games that get low attendance on Phil's stream because he makes any game fun to watch. This might sound harsh, but if you don't watch because of a specific game, you're not really a fan of the streamer. 
you know what, third eye the third, you may have something there. I, I mean, we all know that there are people who show up, okay, because of certain things. Maybe they want to see me fail in Dark Souls. Maybe they want to see me rage at a fighting game, right? And I'm certainly not saying that I'm not, I don't appreciate those viewers, but those aren't the kind of viewers who then, if I'm playing a game that's a slow-paced RPG that I really enjoy from my childhood and I'm going to do like a walkthrough instead of a playthrough, those kind of people won't show up. <clears throat> you see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> what I really need to do is focus on two things. Yes, I do need to try to bring in viewers for hot, popular games. But at the same time, I need to build up a core viewer base so that eventually, if I want to play an indie game or I want to do an RPG, I can get that core viewer base to come hang out with me and support those those efforts as well. Not that it's always I have to do the same kind of content and I'm a one-trick pony. You know, there are plenty of streamers out there. All they can do is play one kind of game. I don't want to be that. I want to be a guy that can do other stuff, a variety-style guy, you know. Um, but that comes in time, I guess, right? Uh, Grazy Dream just did a 100-bit cheer. And he's now tied for top cheer. He says, to mitigate the drop in subs, we need a new challenge. Well, like I just said, uh, there will be a new challenge, uh, new goals uh, set up. Crazy, oops, crazy dream. Uh, they will be set up in, in September. When we hit September, I'll have the new goals. They're all going to be Halloween oriented. I think you guys are going to like them. Uh, so we'll do that when we get there. Okay. <clears throat> all right, guys, I think that's it. I want to say thank you guys very much for your support. Uh, let's end the pre-stream. I'll be honest with you guys, I gotta use the bathroom pretty badly. Um, so I'll take a few minutes here to use the restroom. And then what I'm gonna actually have to do, I have to switch my camera and my microphone and my headphones over to my PC. Actually, I don't need to move my headphones to my PC because I'm not gonna be listening to anything. We're just gonna be getting creative content, right? Um, but yeah, I have to move over to my PC, which will also take a couple minutes to set up. So I'm gonna end the pre-stream. Let's take a, a short break for setup. And then we're gonna, I'm going to resume over on my PC. We're going to be looking at all the creative content together for a while, picking stuff. And then we're going to set up our Sims, all right? So thank you, guys. I'll be back soon. And uh, then we will resume, all right, guys? Thank you, and see you in a few minutes. Thanks.